pressure release for our hips and lower back. Our lower back tends to get quite sore if we've been sitting a lot, mainly because we accentuate that lumbar curve when we're sitting a lot, or we flatten it out and we don't find that natural curve. So it's placing a bit of a strain on the muscles around our pelvis and our lower back. And the connective tissue, we have a, a big lot of connective tissue that sits here, um, the rhomboid fascia. And if that gets dried out and not quite as fluid as it normally would, then the nerves that pass through there can get a little bit entrapped. So it's really nice to keep that quite pliable and gliding along beside each other and the muscles that surround it. So we're going to do a bit of work on our lower back, uh, and then we're going to move to the hips, the muscles of the hips, back and front, and give them a bit of a release. So I hope you enjoy. So we have our balls. If you don't have any, remember I can get some to you if you need some, or you can just use tennis balls. Not quite as good as these because these are quite grippy and a particular consistency as far as pressure goes. If you've got a block, that's always good to have by, and a towel is an alternative if you don't. We're going to start by coming down onto our backs. I'm going to take our balls, my fascia release balls, out of our little tote that they come in. Or perhaps you've just got tennis balls that have no tote, but you've got your sock nearby in case we need them. I'm just going to come down onto our backs. And we want to place these balls, and let me just come back up. We want to place these balls between our lower rib, so find your lower rib, and the top of the pelvis. So the very top of the pelvis and the lower rib, there's a muscle there, the quadratus femoris, that can get a little bit niggly. So we're just going to have a little bit of a go at that. So just going to pop those balls one on either side of the spine in that area. And we'll just take a couple of breaths just lying here. Just letting them sink in. Now you might not feel too much here, it depends on the curve you have in your lumbar spine. But either way, there's a little bit of pressure there, just getting the balls used to that. So if you're not feeling pressure, you can bring one leg in, that might increase the pressure enough, you might bring both legs in. You might pull them in a little bit, so it's increasing that pressure, I can really feel that now in my lower back. And we can just hold here for a moment. If you're okay with that, if the pressure's okay, it's not too painful. And remember, anytime we're doing myofascial release, we don't want any sharp shooting pains, any tingling or numbing. That indicates that we're on a nerve and we should move. So if we're okay here, the pressure's okay, we can stand it. We can maybe just rock from side to side. Just moving those balls slightly over those muscles. And not only those muscles, that thoracolumbar fascia that is at the base of our lower back there, it's getting a little bit of love as well. Just rocking gently. Or perhaps for you, you want to place one foot on the floor. And just cross the leg over. And then you can lift your hips and roll those balls across the muscle, across the fascia. I can feel a couple of crinkly bits in my ring. It it's okay, it's like combing out those fibers. Got that leg crossed, maybe crossing the other leg, so it just does increase the pressure on one side a little. I distribute the weight a little differently, it's not quite as symmetrical. The balls start to slip out, just slip them back in and continue on. So for a lot of the myofascial release today, when we have given them a little bit of love with the balls, we're then going to give them a bit of a stretch. There have been studies that have shown that just this little bit of attention, even just a minute of attention with the myofascial release balls, creates that pliability in the muscles and allows you to not only get more stretch, but sometimes also more strength. So for 
those crossfitters out there, those people doing nice weight training, they're going to give you some little bit of roll on the area that you're trying to build for a minute or so, then start your power lifting. Dropping that foot to the floor, just let the pelvis settle, maybe you want to tip it posteriorly, so tipping the pelvis back, bringing the pubic bone up towards your belly button. Just stay there for a couple of breaths. Obviously when you're doing this video, if you've got quite a sore lower back, you could stay here for a little longer. I'm just going to do some short, sharp ones, which are often quite effective. So taking those myofascial revolves out. Coming up to a seat, I like to sit on something to tilt my pelvis and give me that lumbar curve. So just finding a cross-legged seat, we can try and stretch those muscles now. So bringing our right hand to the mat next to us, lifting our left hand up and over. And remember, this muscle attaches to the top rim of our pelvis and the bottom rib. So if we can try and get those two points as far away from each other, that's when we're going to feel the stretch. So we want to lift those ribs up, anchor that pelvis down. Just take a couple of breaths here. Changing sides. Swapping arms. Try really trying to anchor down that opposite pelvis. stretch this, although this muscle is involved a lot in our walking, but it's also, if you think about where it attaches, when it contracts, it draws those two points closer together. So this side, contraction, and this side, stretching. Coming up, we're just going to give that lower back a little bit more love, just by coming into Sphinx Pose for about a minute or so. Just bringing our elbows under our shoulders, letting the feet come as wide as you feel your lower back needs it, and just stay here. If you do have a block, you can rest your head on it. If you don't, just finding some way of being comfortable for about a minute. If this is too much pressure on your lower back, we're doing a bit of compression work here in that um, thoracolumbar fascia. You just walk your arms out a little bit further and it reduces that curve. If you feel nothing here, you can come up to seal pose and increase that curve. Just try not to squeeze those glutes too much. Too much pressure on that glute max. We might start to feel it in the sacroiliac joint. Staying here for about another 30 seconds. So if it's available to us, maybe closing our eyes. And imagine you're sending that breath down into that region. Imagine it's a nice, warm breath that starts to heat and melt that. to rejuvenate it. Bring some juiciness back. Take three more breaths here. slowly onto your tummy, make a pillow with your hands, place your forehead on that, and just let everything go soft. Let the glutes relax, let the legs go heavy. And just gently pushing yourself up and back to child's pose. So stretch in a different way. 
taking the knees wide, toes tucked, bringing the forehead to the mat or our towel. Let's take three breaths here. Gently push yourself back up and come back onto our back. So it's nice for this next one, we're going to do our glutes, which is a pretty broad term for two, three muscles on our bottoms. But we're going to start with the glute max, which is the biggest one. So the glute max attaches to the, the sacrum. So we're going to attack some of the attachment points along our sacrum, which is the bone that wedges into the back of our pelvis there. So we're just going to start here. We'll have one ball either side of that sacrum, just for a brief moment. And then we're going to come and go into the piriformis, which can get quite tight. So the piriformis is a small muscle. It, it comes across and attaches to the top of our thigh bone. And it can get quite tight. And sometimes the sciatic nerve runs through the piriformis. Sometimes it runs in front and sometimes it runs behind. So if this muscle is tight, you can compress that nerve and you can get a little bit of that achy pain down your leg. So we're gonna come in to pretty much, if you think of your bottom as a bullseye, we're gonna come straight into the middle of that and we'll just play around with the balls until you find that piriformis and where it's maybe a little tight for you. And we'll get into that. So let's start with that. Um, Max, <laughs> come down onto our backs with our knees bent. So we want a ball either side of our sacrum, so it's up quite high, but not right at the top of the pelvis. You want to avoid the bony prominences, so we actually want to come outside that bony prominence of the middle of our pelvis. And just feel into that for a moment. Just feel those balls, give the nervous system a chance to calm down and know that it's not under attack. And then maybe you just want to sway from side to side. Just rocking gently on that attachment point with this large glute max muscle. There's fibres that run a couple of different ways along our bottom. But right here we're getting into that attachment point. And again, if those balls start to drift, just bring them back in. Just wagging our tail. Or maybe you want to shuffle up and down a little. And if any of this is too much for you, just stay still. And if you're not feeling too much, just move them slightly. So a few millimetres sometimes can make all that difference. We're moving, just rest, let the body become heavy and sink into those balls. We're going to try and find that piriformis, so taking those balls out, taking them into that big knee part of your bottom and just bring the legs into what we call butterfly yoga so soles of our feet together or Baddhakanasana or Sukta Baddhakanasana because we're lying down and you might need to play around and move those balls a little you want to find almost a dull achy sensation and you might not feel much here that's okay we're just as usual on your first sprinkle body the balls to a new part of our body, we just give the body a chance to recalibrate and get used to that idea. And we're going to start by bringing our knees back together and bring our left foot to our right knee. So that ball, I might just pop in a little bit more. We'll start to transition, this might be enough for you, but if you can, transition your weight a little bit more to that left side and you might find that piriformis. So sit 
with it for a couple of breaths. Again, getting the body used to it. And then you might want to wag your tail. So the ball on the right's not doing that much. It's more acting like a little bit of a kickstand just to help me hold myself up. And I'm just wagging my tail. Oh. Another nice way to do this is against the wall. Obviously you don't have your legs like this, but you can just wag your tail on the wall and you're getting right into that nasty, tight external rotator. So it's responsible for this action in our leg, piriformis. So just keep popping that ball in, staying there. When you find a juicy spot, just sit with it, let it relax. Take maybe four or five breaths here. body's reaction to attack is it tenses up and we want to use our breath long, deep and slow to let it relax. So let's release that foot. If the right ball has slipped out, just popping it back and then taking the right foot up onto that knee. Tail. So we can bring that left ball in a little closer to make that wag a little easier. We want that ball on the right hand side to be rolled across the glute. So it's going in the direction, generally speaking, that the piriformis runs. And every time it escapes a little myofascial ball, just pop it back in. Internally gritting my teeth because it's not comfortable. And release that foot. So we're not going to stretch this muscle just yet. We're going to move on and do our glute muscles, uh, glute med muscles, and then also we get stretched at the same time then. So glute med muscle is our, like our hip pocket muscle. It sits and attaches to the edge of our pelvis, the top edge of our pelvis, and comes across here, so it's the side of our glute. So if we start with both balls, on the very top rim of our pelvis, like just below that, and a few inches either side of our sacrum. So right up the top of our pelvis, the top rim. This little muscle connects. Just let yourself sink. Take three or four breaths there. And this one can be a little bit ouchy. We're gonna move around the top rim of that pelvis and eventually we'll come around onto our TFL. So our TFL muscle starts at this bony prominence, our hip bones and runs into our IT band. So it is a front pocket hip, glute B back pocket, TFL front pocket. When we get to the TFL, you might need a glass of wine because it's nasty. So we're gonna move along the top of the pelvis, doing the glute med attachment points, and then we're gonna get into that TFL, have a bit of a stretch, and then we're done. So we're going to move that ball, the left ball, just out slightly. Move the right ball in slightly. So we want to start to come onto our left side a little and let that left leg just straighten out. You can bend it if you want, but I find that far more painful. So just let it straighten out. We want to start to tip towards the left. So we can use that ball as a kickstand. We can use our towel to prop us up so that we're not holding ourselves up. Or we can use our block. It's another good alternative. So we're just making our way a couple points along the rim of the pelvis. So these are really just trigger points, 
letting the ball do the work. You could lift your hips on that, off that foot and just wag your tail a bit or chug a little bit. But to be honest, just holding these points is often enough. And I really like having that towel chucked in. We're gonna move it a little bit more. And just one ball, we're coming over. So we're almost on our side, but not quite. Almost on our side, but not quite. Maybe I can use this block from my head. Oh, isn't that lovely? Except for the pain. <laughs> my glute knee. So we don't want it to be unbearable. If it's extremely painful, just move it slightly. Um, but if you can stand it, it's quite nice to release. Now just notice, I noticed in myself then, I was tensing up through my leg. We want to try and let that relax. Just breathing here, a couple more breaths and then we'll move on to the next point. We're going to come all the way over onto our side so the ball will just peek out. Ooh, this is a nasty one. So we're not at the front of that hip bone yet, we're still up at the top rim of that pelvis. But we're at the very edge, so I've come off my elbow, you don't have to, you can come back down, legs still straight. Notice I've tensed up again, just letting that leg relax. Just a couple of moments here. Before we move to that nasty TFL type muscle, so remember, it attaches on our hip bone, front hip bone, runs down into our IPT band. So it's, it's approximately there. So any point between the hip bone and the side of our leg, that's going to be good. So we want to bring that ball, hip bone, side of our leg. We want to bring the right leg over. So we want to start to roll forward. My teacher, Tiffany, says this is an all or nothing muscle. It's an all or nothing muscle. You'll feel this. If you don't feel it, again, move that ball around slightly. It covers a fair bit of real estate around it. <laughs> Just hold this one, don't move. Don't do anything. Just try and soften with every exhale to let the body fall heavier into that ball. Still a bit of a hard muscle to stretch this one. best way to release it is through these myofascial balls or massage therapists to get into it. Let's take three more breaths. Maybe closing our eyes if that's available to us. I don't know whether you can hear that but it's raining here. Beautiful background for a relaxing practice. Just lift the hips enough so you can take that ball out and just come and lie on your back. Just let everything relax for a moment. I'm just going to change sides so you can see me from the other direction. So we're just making our way onto our backs, legs out. Hands is up. <laughs> Just notice what you notice. You might notice that that left leg turns out a little more. You might notice that there's a bit more real estate in the glutes. Onto the floor. You might notice nothing at all. Doesn't matter. Just take a couple more breaths here. Just checking in with the body. And then we'll move to the other side. So we'll start with both balls, the very top rim of that pelvis. So find the top rim of the pelvis out a couple of inches from the middle of the spine. Ooh, this one's sore. So we're focusing on our right side today. So just let the pelvis sink, let the pelvis become heavy and let the balls work their magic.
So this fascia is a, is a connective tissue that runs right through our body. It's around every organ, it's around every muscle, it's around every cell. And it needs to be fluid and liquid so it can glide and move. So when we're using these myofascial balls, or tennis balls, we're stimulating and annoying the cells so that they shoot collagen and the good stuff in there and start lubricating it again. But we're also working into the muscles, and particularly these ones are trigger points along the attachment points. We're just going to move that right ball just out about an inch, still along the top rim of the pelvis. If you've got your towel, you can start to prop yourself out. Right legs out, we're starting to just lean towards our right. The other ball, you can use it as a kickstand if you want, just start to use it to turn you. And I'm gonna have my block handy to use as my pillow. Shall we just stay in here? You might try bending your leg and see if that's more beneficial for you or less beneficial. We're going to come more over onto the side. My hair's gone a bit funky. So try and stretch that right leg out straight if you can. This one hurts. This one really hurts. So we're almost directly on our side. Controlling the weight I've put on it because I've come up on my toes and my back leg. My block, it's my pillow, I forgot. Just take three more breaths here. And then we're moving right across to that TFL. So front hip bone, side of the leg, somewhere in that real estate. So come all the way over, onto the front, left leg comes over. And just let yourself sink. So you can hold yourself up with your arms to control the weight that you're putting into that ball. So if you could do this practice like at least once a week, Particularly if you're sitting a lot or, or working out a lot, either or, it can start to create some more healthiness in those tissues and it might help with your lower back. Let's just take three more breaths here. Rotating that knee out. If that's enough for you, that's enough. Otherwise, we're reaching through and grabbing behind the hamstring of the right leg and pulling it in towards us. So, getting a bit of a stretch through those muscles that we've just released on our left side. Let's take a few breaths here. side so changing legs right ankle on top of left start by pushing the knee away of the right foot keeping the right foot flexed and then reaching through 
behind the left knee. Just pulling that knee towards you, which pulls the right leg towards you. Just take a couple of breaths there. We're going to do just one more stretch for those uh, glute muscles, all of the glute muscles. Pull my pants up because they keep falling down. We're going to cross our legs tightly. So we're coming into supine gomakasana or cow face pose. So the knees are stacked quite tightly and then I want you to lift up like you're doing a crunch and either grab your ankles, your shins or your feet. Hold on to those. Pull the shins towards your chest and then lay back down. So I've got left leg on top of right, so I'm feeling this in my left glutes. We're gonna stay here for about five or six breaths. Try with every exhale to let that glute from the top leg, relax a little more. And just simply releasing the grip you have on your legs, crossing them over in the other direction, doing our little crunch to grab the shins or the feet, and then lying back down and feeling that stretch in the opposite leg, opposite glute, sorry. So for me, my right leg's on top, it's my right glute that's being stretched. Maybe taking five or six breaths here. One last breath here. And just let those legs unravel. Bring the feet as wide as our mat. And just wash through by dropping the knees from side to side. Hands can rest wherever they like. And we just stretch our legs out. Feet as wide as the mat, let the toes drop outwards, bring the arms out to the side of the body, just spend some moments in Shavasana. As long as you like, thanks for joining me, Namaste.